Hello everybody and welcome to another video and today it is the 28th of September so let's get into this as usual not much in the hair sun region I will just go over a minor change I made to the map over here just around Kiselivka we had reports of Ukrainian shelling of Maximivka, Vasilki and Blahodatnye so based on that these three towns are under the Russian control and I had previously had this town under Ukrainian control but what's being reported is that the Ukrainians are actually building up some of their forces around Kiselivka which is one of these towns along, along the front lines which is being used to probe into the Russian defensive lines at the moment so you have the 63rd mechanized brigade and they've been stockpiling on personnel and on ammunition specifically for the M777 howitzers so they've been using that recently to strike some Russian positions but no real changes as of now and that really does just apply to the entire front line around here we've seen a relative pause on the front lines in this area and I think it will stay like that for a while especially as everything's going on in the Kharkiv region but anyway we saw some pretty heavy strikes on Zaporizhia and on Dnipro last night and also today so that could either be a strike from the Air Force or perhaps there were Jiran 2 drones that flew into some targets in these towns or cities we're not exactly sure because there isn't any good footage of what occurred here but we did get some good footage of strikes on Kharkiv so there was a strike there last night on a pretty large electrical substation which led to some huge power outages in the city and there was a pretty large fire as well which was caused as a result of the strike a manufacturing plant was also hit as a result in total five missiles were launched so there was some pretty heavy damage to Kharkiv last night so it seems as if Russia is continuing in the trend of striking the energy infrastructure of Ukraine let's move on now to the Seversk front where we actually do have some minor changes so we have another video of a Russian advance on Spirny and based on the geolocation it is now safe to say that this this um, oil compression plant is under Russian control it is a very small area and it's been going back and forth for a while but nonetheless yeah at this point it is under Russian control and you are seeing them gradually advance every single day towards Spirini over here which is also a very small town but the Wagnerites they have held the line and now they're trying to push forward every day they gain like a few hundred meters in this area let's move on now to the most important front line most important part of the front line specifically which is around Liman where I did make some changes first of all around here this is nowhere near the actual front line I will actually draw it out right now it's much closer to this at the moment because this entire force area has really been abandoned by the Russians you don't really have that many Russian troops in this area the main nodes of Russian defense are around Dibrova and Kremina but even then they don't have that many troops in this area they are woefully undermanned in this specific part of the front line which is why Ukraine they saw an opportunity they launched an attack into Bilhorivka which sort of granted them some leeway and some more positions to cross the river through it also sort of like lowered the amount of artillery strikes on say Serebryanka and Rihorivka they were distanced a bit from the front lines so it's not actually under Russian fire control anymore it is still like three miles away from the front lines though but the pontoon bridge itself was built around Serebryanka just uh, around here and you had some recon units and also mo mobile units cross over the river over here and now they're pushing in the direction of uh, Dibrova and Kremina and interestingly also in the direction of Yampil over here 
So we're going to see them cross over the forest and potentially reach this road over here, which connects to Dronifka and Yampil. There is a supply hub over here, which could be taken over, and that would be another loss for the Russians in this area. Also, you're seeing them push in the direction of Torske, which is possible if they say push through the forest, reach the road over here near Yampil, and then actually just go further north and push into Torske. It's not that difficult. Russia does not have that many men in this area, so I expect to see this occur in the coming days. And this could come in tandem with an assault from this town over here, which was captured by the Ukrainians called Kolodaizia. And you're going to see like a, an assault on Zarykhani from both the north and then again from the south. And that would, of course, fully encircle the Russian grouping in Leman. So really the only town that is left between the two Ukrainian thrusts is Zarykhani. You could also say Torske, but most importantly Zarykhani. So if Russia wants to withdraw, really their only option at the moment would be to send supplies through this road over here. And they would cross through Zarykhani and pass through the Zarebets River and then just go further north towards Makivka. Makivka is um, over here, you can see. They go through like Terni, Neve, uh, Neveske, and then Makivka, and then further on Zvatove, which would be the new defensive line. But if this was actually a part of their plan, they would have done it already. Interestingly, they are holding strong in Liman every day. There are assaults from specifically the 66th Brigade on Liman from the south around Sari Karavan, uh, this Dibrova, and Shuchiruve. And they really just assault in these small companies and just co constantly do it throughout the day to wear down the Russians, the Bars 16 unit in Liman. But it seems as if they're holding the line pretty strong in the south. The same cannot be said about the north, though, or the east. But specifically in the west, there has been some pretty heavy fighting with the Ukrainian units actually pushing in to Serednije. I uh, had previously talked about this, but then they used their new positions in the town to push into Shandri Holove, and now there's a bit of ambiguity as to what's going on in the town. Some Ukrainian maps show it as under full Ukrainian control. Some Russian maps actually show this too, but then there are some like pretty impartial maps that I see showing it still as contested. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, so just think of this entire area as um, very much a gray area, but... If this were to fall, and it might have already, then that would just open the gateways to attacking Derilove, not only from the west, because Nova Salifka was taken, but also from the north. And Derilove is really the only town left before reaching Stavki. And the reason why Stavki is important, I'll zoom out for a second, is because if you take, say, Zavki, Stavki, you would just be like cutting off the one other supply line, which I don't even think is important anymore because it's basically under Ukrainian fire control. But it would also give Ukraine a very good position to flank the Russian troops and they can then attack from the north. And I'm not exactly sure how many defensive positions were built to the north. Most of the Russian defense is focused on the south, which is why they've been able to hold the line over here. It's also been focused, of course, on the Chandri Holove Drobysheve line, which is why they were not able to um, break through the Ukrainian units. They were not able to push through as fast as they were in other sectors. But yes, they did take Nova Salivka. I will change this to blue right now. And we have the proof from this geolocated video of the Ukrainians in the administrative building. But um, now all eyes are turned to Derilove and also Drobysheve, which is still contested, by the way. We don't exactly know the exact lines over here but it's safe to say that about like 50 50 of the town uh, is a split right now so you might see a further ukrainian push in the coming days and if they were able to do this then they would get control of this road as well which could be used to push from uh, into liman from the northwest so that's another thing to look into all in all the situation is very dire for russia and they basically are in an operational encirclement by now. And 
fully encircled at this pace. So I am very interested into uh, seeing what the Russian strategy is because you did see how they withdrew very quickly from Izium without much of a fight. But the same thing is not being replicated in Le Mans, as I said. So they're probably going to stand by. And we'll have to see. Maybe they're taking a gamble right now and they're betting that they can hold on until reinforcements are sent in either from other sectors or from the partial mobilization. But that's all in the future. We're going to have to wait and see. Another thing that I have to mention is that some of the pro-Russian sources have mentioned that the Ukrainians have reached the west bank of the Zyarbets River over here, which would imply that this town over here, Bilhorovka, is under Russian, um, sorry, Ukrainian control and also Ivanivka. So that's another interesting thing to note. Also, I will note that Zyarbets River cannot be used as a new defensive line because of the Ukrainian crossing over here north of the Donetsk River. If they're already pushing in with their mobile units, they can actually pretty quickly reach Kremina and cut off the road from Kremina to Svatove, which is being shelled at the moment. There is some pretty heavy shelling of this area by Ukraine. They're also sending in some pretty heavy reinforcements from Mohorodichny. Remember that town? It was heavily fought over. And of course, Russia withdrew from there uh, like a week or two ago. So there were a lot of reserves stationed in this area. A lot of the veterans from the fighting around Krasnopilia and Dolina. They're now being sent over to the fighting around Dorbyshevet and just south of Liman to replenish the losses of the Ukrainians because there have been some pretty significant losses on the Ukrainian side as a result of the heavy fighting on the outskirts of Liman. But given the fact that they have additional reserves, they can probably continue to push on despite those losses. And they're actually being resupplied a lot from this specific supply hub, which I'm mentioning because it's been discussed pretty heavily today. So the supply hub, it's in Pervomaisky, which is in Kharkiv Oblast. It goes through Balaklia, which can then supply the front around Kupiansk and the front around Liman. So it is very important. Every day you have new men and new supplies being sent in through this hub. And the, basically the plan is to send as much equipment through and men as through as possible in the coming days in order to push towards Vatove. That is the um, long-term objective at the moment. And a lot of that is occurring through here. And I will mention that this hub is probably within the range of, say, the Tornado MLRS systems that Russia has. If they can station them in, say, Borova, not in Piedliman at the moment, but they could probably station them in Borova and fire onto the station, which would disrupt Ukrainian supply lines. But speaking of Piedliman, the situation here is also pretty ambiguous. You have um, not one side controlling of either of these towns. They're uh, very fluid right now. We don't exactly know who's in these towns, but it seems as if the Ukrainians are on the southern outskirts of Piedliman and they could pretty easily take it in the coming days because there isn't much of a Russian resistance over here. Although there might be some Russian resistance in Borova, it is a supply hub and it is a rather large town compared to some of the other villages in this area. So that's also something to look out for. But let's move on now to the Oskil front where I did make some changes to the map. We have the 92nd Brigade obviously uh, fighting in this area. They pushed through, took most of Kupiansk. There is some uh, conflicting reports about what exactly is going on in here. You have some Ukrainian sources which were actually saying that Kucherivka was also taken and that the fighting has actually reached Petropavlivka. That is certainly possible, so I'm not disputing that. But I'm going to be a bit conservative with their gains here for the moment, although by tomorrow the situation could have entirely changed. There's also, there's also talk from the pro-Ukraine sources that Podoli has fallen. Again, I can't confirm this, but what I can confirm is that this town over here, Kiev Sharifka, has actually fallen. And we actually have the footage of that from uh, Ukraine entering the town, which is another uh, important suburb just outside of Kupiansk, Vuzlovi, which was taken actually 
perhaps it was taken a week ago or at least Ukrainian recon forces entered a week ago because they just released old footage from this area which was dated to September 21st which is pretty interesting and it does also show that a lot of the footage that is posted is outdated which could imply that since then there have been different changes to the map and further Ukrainian advances so certainly it is possible that by now they have advanced to some of these other neighboring towns like Korolivka and then eventually if they uh, gain control of this road over here they would be able to push all the way to Kislivka which is another one of the Russian nodes of defense you do have some troops stationed in this area but all in all the situation is still pretty fluid in this area so we don't have a clear view of what's going on just yet same thing for this bridgehead around Vorichny. we don't exactly know what's going on in here but it seems as if the ukrainians specifically the 14th brigade have solidified control of priyanikivka and of horobivka but that while they were assaulting tajiljanka they were pushed back by the russian troops in this area and they retreated to the nearby forested areas over here. But certainly they do have a solid control of the Vorichny, which is now being resupplied via pontoon bridge and MI-8 helicopters. So you have a lot of man pads and artillery being sent in right now. And artillery crews are being moved over the river to fire onto Russian positions. So clearly the Ukrainians have at least a solid bridgehead right now, which will be used in the future. Their goal is to push towards Sinkivka from both sides as I've talked about previously and that would sort of force Russia to just totally withdraw from this entire line around the river which is already has like a, a million holes in it so that's what will probably happen in the future but anyway last thing I want to talk about before I end the video is that the Pentagon has just announced a new aid package to Ukraine which won't immediately be sent to them but it will happen in increments again we have the 40 billion dollars in aid which was appropriated by congress and then the packages get rolled out over time so this is one of them and this one amounts to 1.1 billion dollars so what's included in this aid package according to the pentagon and to the russian media is that there will be 18 HIMAR munitions and there will be 50 Humvees, 150 tactical vehicles, which will be used to tow heavy weapons and heavy equipment, 40 trucks, and then 80 trailers in addition. So, you know, you'd put the equipment on the trailers and then use the trucks to move them along. There's also going to be a lot of anti-drone systems and radar systems, perhaps like NASIMs which are, have been shipped by the United States to Ukraine already, but you might see more of those sent in as time goes on right now. There's also various types of field equipment that are going to be sent over, so like body armor and optics and stuff like that. So, in total, the total amount that has been sent from the Pentagon is $16.2 so there's still a lot of money that was appropriated by Congress, which could be sent to Ukraine as time goes on and then of course once that is depleted you could see some other um, appropriations bill passed through Congress to allow for more aid to be sent to Ukraine but this is interesting this package comes as Ukraine is pushing through in Lamont and that's not really a coincidence they're going to try to assist ukraine and the high mars is interesting they're going to start using those more specifically on lpr territory so look out for that it's already been happening for a week or so and it's just going to continue getting worse for the lpr so we're going to have to wait and see for what russia's response to all of this is thank you all for watching and i'll see you tomorrow